Hi, thanks for giving me some of your time today to talk with you about why it's really important for businesses today to understand and take actions to establish and maintain brand loyal customers and some of the key aspects of doing that. Let's get started. All right. I'm Lauren, in case you didn't know that already. So just to give you a brief background on me, I work at Lawton Digital Marketing, a digital marketing agency I founded about a year and a half ago and manage. I'm finishing up studies, well, hopefully, at the University of Denver, where I focus on marketing and PR, and I'm pursuing a graduate degree. And when I'm not doing that, I am all about the Colorado lifestyle, so I'm out there trail running and hiking in the mountains. All right, enough about me. Let me give you a quick overview about how we're gonna get through this today. So, first I wanna explain how the game has changed in communication and acquisition of customers by businesses. We're gonna talk about that along various touch points along what's called the customer journey and marketing funnel, which will make sense to you soon. And then we're also gonna talk about why brand loyalty is really important and valuable to a business. And then once we've given you a good background, then we're gonna talk about um, some of the ways in which a business can establish brand loyalty. And that includes being human and what's important about that and make it make a little more sense. And then building a brand personality, which ties into being human. Let's get started. Okay. First, it's important to understand that the way businesses acquire customers and the way customers seek out new products and services is drastically different today. So in the past, and when I talk about in the past, I'm mostly referring to generally the pre-internet era. In the past, there was interaction for products and services a lot more face-to-face. -face. You didn't have a lot of other options. You were also not, you were also a little bit more limited by geography as there was no Amazon or eBay to allow you to get anything and everything from anywhere in the world in about 30 seconds. And finally, you were limited a lot more by selection. Take grocery stores, for example. The average number of items in a supermarket has jumped by more than 500% in the last 35 years, from 9,000 to 47,000 items. Talk about choice. Who needs that much choice today? Which brings us into the present, where you are inundated with choice as a consumer. And not only that, but consumers are communicating in real time and expect the same of businesses on all sorts of digital internet-based channels. Not only is everything occurring in real time today and mostly over the internet, but it's also important to understand that consumers, with being inundated with advertising and products to choose from, they pay attention for less time. You lose them quickly, and the way in which they search, which 80% of today's consumers research product and services online, 60% of those start that research on a Google search. So, with that thought in mind, Americans today pay attention for about eight seconds, and then you lose them, which is less than the attention span of a goldfish. Keep that in mind. Did I lose you yet? And then, if they're searching on Google, only the first 10 results appear on the first page of Google. 10 results, that's 10 businesses. There's a lot more than that out there, especially those little guys you might never have heard of. Have you ever heard of the second page of Google? Have you ever been to it? Probably not very often. Okay, so now that we've talked about how much things have changed today since the pre-internet era in communication, especially focusing on how businesses and consumers find each other, let's talk about a little marketing jargon. So first, there's a marketing funnel, which is a great way for marketers to outline um, the ways in which they would like a customer or a consumer to turn into a customer. First, by being introduced to the brand, becoming interested in the brand, becoming to the point where they desire the brand or want the product and service, which leads them to hopefully make a purchase. And that is the marketing funnel. 
Now, the marketing funnel is part of a bigger concept called the customer journey. We're gonna, not going to dive too far into the customer journey today, but just in case you hear it again, understand that the customer journey describes the entire process of interaction between a consumer and a company. From the first awareness of introduction to the company to when they leave for a competitor and never return. Here's a, one more example of a customer journey. Customer journey can't just be simply mapped out. I mean, it's the entire interaction with a consumer and that is completely different depending on a million different factors such as company size, industry, lead time, close ratios, all these different things factor into what a customer's set of interactions look like with a brand. This example is of a CD company who reaches out directly to artists to try to convince them to have them develop their music. Look how complicated this is, and this is just one example. Okay, so why do you need to care about, as a business, brand loyalty anyways? because it's extremely valuable. It helps your business operate at a much higher profit. In fact, getting a new customer costs five times more than maintaining an existing one. That's a lot of money. And then the value of actually maintaining a uh, customer because they're brand loyal, it's a big difference between that and maintaining a customer um, as a repeat buyer. Now why? Because a repeat buyer is just habitual buying behavior. They're just buying something over and over again out of convenience. For example, maybe they drive by the same gas station or grocery store on their way home. Well, if they move, they're going to go to a different gas station and grocery store because they didn't feel any connection to those gas station or grocery store brands. It was just convenient, which means they're not a very consistent buyer. You could lose them any time because really they don't really care about purchasing from you. They just care about getting their purchase taken care of. A brand loyal customer, on the other hand, is what Apple has done a great job developing. They're, de they're dependable because they're passionate about you. So even if they move, they'll come back to your grocery store or your gas station and they advocate for you. You talk about, as a consumer or a human, what you're passionate and care about. And when you talk about something in a positive light, when you talk about a brand, you're going to bring in more customers. So, now you have an understanding of brand loyalty and why it's important, and also why consumers and businesses uh, connect and communicate differently today. Now let's talk about how a brand can interact with a consumer to turn them into a brand loyal customer. First, it's really important when you are a brand and talking with a consumer to get their attention, you have to go above and beyond just offering your product or service to make that emotional connection. Tug at their heartstrings to get their attention. As Amir Khoury, a University of Pittsburgh researcher, put it, that consumers, you have to tug at what they desire most. Really understand it and how that relates to your product or service. And when you do that and position your product and communication that way, Consumers are a lot more likely to feel that your brand is an integral part of themselves and that their buying decision is representative of their own personal values. Now, how do you go about making that emotional connection? One way to do that is through two-way communication. So, you have to, as a business, communicate with a consumer and First, in order to communicate, there's two really important parts of communicating. You gotta listen, and then you have to reply. You can't just listen stone-faced, which is what businesses used to do, assuming they listened at all. If you're sitting across the table from your significant other at dinner, telling them this passionate story that's very exciting about your day, and then they just sit there, stone-faced, and never reply. Are you gonna keep talking? No. And you're not also going to feel a bond. You'll probably get a little frustrated. Works the same way. Businesses have to show that they're listening by replying. Here's some great examples by Nike. Obviously shows that this is a scalable solution. Nike is a worldwide brand, yet has found a way to interact personally with consumers as they're replying directly to specific consumer tweets on Twitter right here. 
All right, so let's get a little more specific here, huh? So we know you gotta establish an emotional connection with a consumer from your brand. In order to do that, you have to establish some human-like characteristics. Now, if you're going to build a uh, almost a human-like presence around your brand, you need to have a great understanding of who you're talking to. So, you need to do your homework to establish a well-defined target audience. For example, if you're a lawn care company and you're reaching out to, uh, for example, a certain neighborhood that happens to have an older demographic in the suburbs, you'd really want to establish a retired senior couple target audience. This one's just an example. You know about how old they are, what neighborhood they live in, and then what kind of affluence they have and what they're going to care about. A retired senior couple is probably going to care about their lawn being extremely well cared for. They're going to want consistency and reliability. They're also going to care about someone who's friendly. They probably like the lawnmower guy who stops and chats with them five minutes after every mow because they're retired and sitting at home. And then they also want someone who's likely, politically correct or not, a native English speaker who they can talk to and understand. They probably don't care as much about things like scheduling because they'll probably be a little bit more flexible or uh, sophisticated online payment systems because at this age range, they're more likely to be mailing you checks. In this way, it's really important to understand um, what's going to be important to your audience. Once you figure out what's important to them, be those qualities. Be passionate and have, as a business, a passionate brand voice. Tough Mudder is a great example here. If you're not familiar with it, Tough Mudder is an obstacle race course that goes all around the country, usually about one per state that has enough population and a course availability. Um, and it supports both military veterans, uh, especially focusing on those who are uh, wounded military veterans. And they have figured out who their audience is and they've made their obstacle course or their service or product all about that audience. When you get to a Tough Mudder race, you stand at the starting line and they recognize all of the veterans. And then they sing the national anthem for the start of every leg and everybody sings. And then they take the wounded veterans and they recognize them separately and have everyone thank them for their service. Everyone stands up to a standing ovation, ruckus applause, despite the fact that everyone's about to run a 12 mile intimidating obstacle course race. It gives me goosebumps just talking about it from my experience with it. Tough Munner has that experience and talks in that voice, shows who they support on their website, on their social media channels, and that experience is consistent with what you see when you actually um, arrive in person. They obviously are aligning with their customers' values and they've committed wholeheartedly to their personality. They support people who support veterans and uh, those who are patriotic. That's what they're all about. So once you have that passionate brand voice, it's important to be consistent. Yes, I know, no branding presentation is complete without Apple, but there's a really good reason why. Apple's had the same logo since 1977. So we talked about how consistency is possible when you have you know, a bigger company like Nike with a bigger budget when you're speaking, but it's actually possible when you're smaller too. Apple's been doing it with their Apple logo since 1977 when the logo first came out. Back then, their office was in a strip mall and Jobs and Wozniak, who are the owners, or were the owners back then, um, were making their own computers. Here's one more example of consistency. Yeah, we're gonna do a little tuning of Lawton Digital Marketing's horn here. So this one really showcases more of consistency with online channels and shows that you don't have to have a gigantic budget to pull this off. Lawton Digital's budget when it first started was nothing. And even today, we spend less than $400 a month on marketing. But if you go to any lot in digital marketing online social media channel or anything from our company, you'll find that it's consistent in the color scheme, in the logo, in the look and feel, in the language, just like it is here. And that is really important because consumers naturally remember um, visual media much, much faster than they do text. In fact, 
they recognize and rem- or read visual media and process it 60,000 times faster than text or auditory. 60,000. So keep everything consistent in your look and feel. Okay, it's time to wrap up. Let's just do a brief recap of what we've covered today. So first, why is brand loyalty important? It's because it is so much more expensive. Remember, it costs five times more to bring in a new customer than it does to maintain an existing one. Besides that, a loyal customer is going to advocate for your business. And that brings in more loyal customers. Not only that, but that loyal customer base, they're going to be... um, They're going to be consistent and you can rely on them more for your net profits to stay because they're passionate about your brand and are more likely to stick with you. How do you go about doing that as a business? You have to create brand loyalty by establishing an emotional connection. Tug at the consumer's heartstrings. In order to do that, you have to communicate with them on a human level and align with their values, with a personality that's associated with your brand. And then once you have that passionate voice, make sure you're consistent across all of your digital channels in order to be recognizable. Because remember, humans remember visual and process it much, much faster than they do text. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. If we were in person, I'd be happy to give you some time to answer questions for you. However, since we're over video, feel free to post some questions in the comments and I'm happy to answer. Finally, you'll have a copy of the slide deck, so if you'd like to take a closer look at our sources from our presentation today, you can do so at your convenience. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day.